Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a quilt called Hidden Terrace. This is a pattern designed by Doug Lecco of Antler Quilt Designs, and it uses jelly roll strips. The strips I've selected are called Clover Blossom Farm. These are Kansas Troubles prints. The only other things we need, we need one accent, and I'm gonna use this red burgundy, and then we need a background. The pattern does come with multiple sizes. We have a topper, a throw, and a king. I'm gonna make the throw size. So I need a yard and a half of background, 23 jelly roll strips, one and one eighth yards of accent. Then we need an outside border, some backing and some binding, but we'll worry about that later. The first step is to pick out the 23 strips that we want to use in the patchwork. This jelly roll has a mix of lights and darks and the light ones, they're not going to be ideal because our background is very light. So here's the background. So I'm going to want to pick from these darker strips and then I'm also not gonna wanna use very many of these red ones because they're the same color as the accent and then the accent won't show quite as prominently. So I'm gonna pick a couple of red ones to use here and here but the rest are going to be green and brown and black and gold. These should all work well, and they're all going to get cut exactly the same. They all get cut into squares. Then I'm going to cut up the background and the accent, and I can't give you the sizes for those pieces because it's not my pattern, but Antler Quilt Designs patterns are very, very easy to follow. Okay, all of the cutting is done. The next step is to take all of our squares, our printed squares, our background squares, and our accent squares to the sewing machine. We've got three different units we're gonna make here. The first one uses four of the printed squares, and I'm just picking four different colors at random. And we're making a four patch unit. So we're just gonna sew all four of these together. I like to put the two right sides together like this, sew them and keep that thread between the squares with just a little space. And then I'm gonna open this up and press the bottom one here, press this seam allowance to that side. So I'm opening it up with my fingers and using the pad of my finger or my fingernail to finger press the seam to the right. And then the top one, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And now when we put these right sides together, the seam allowances are going in opposite directions and it makes it real easy to tell if you're matching that intersection there. And all we have to do now is stitch this one. And it doesn't matter which way you press this seam allowance, I like to press them to the right because it's a little bit easier. The second thing we're going to make, it's the same shape, but it has two of the accent squares and then two printed squares. And again, don't worry about the colors, just pick up a variety of colors here. The third block is the same shape, but it has two of the accents and then two background squares. There's the third block. 
So the pattern tells me how many I need of each kind of the blocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and get those all stitched up and I'll give them just a quick ironing also. All of the four patch blocks are done and we're ready to combine some of these into a bigger block. So we're gonna need, let's see, we need two of these. They're gonna go on the outside here of a block. We need one of the solid accents. That's gonna go in the middle. Then two of these blocks that have two accents, they're gonna go like that. So you can see the accents are making an X. And then these four patches that just have four different pieces from the jelly rolls, they're gonna go here. And I'm gonna twist them around so I don't end up with two of the same color right next to themselves. But other than that, I'm not gonna to worry too much about which color ends up where. These are pretty easy to sew together. We're just gonna make the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row, and then alternate the directions that we press the seam allowances. So again, I'm gonna fold this row over that one and stitch down here first. Now we'll put the third row right there and you might want to put a couple of pins in here so these ones don't fall off while we're stitching the top two together. And I like keeping everything attached like this often because it helps me to not get things turned the wrong way. On patchwork like this, where I've got one plain square, I am definitely want, going to press these seam allowances toward that plain square because we've got seam allowances here and so it wants to press that way. And this is the way the pattern tells you to press them also. So these two are going in, that means the top and bottom row, these seam allowances are going to go out so that we will have an easy time to stitch these rows together. Now we'll just sew these last two rows together. Those blocks are all done and I did iron them nice and flat. The next step is to take these little squares and these small triangles to the sewing machine. Each of these squares gets two triangles put on to the adjacent sides there. The way we do this is we line up the top two edges here and stitch all the way down one side. And press the seam allowances toward the dark color. I'm being a little careful so I don't stretch it because we've got straight grain here, but this is a bias edge there. The second piece is going to go right there. So we're gonna to wanna to line up these edges and the easiest way I found to stitch this is to turn it upside down, line up those raw edges, and then you can see that the bottom here, right where we're going to stitch here, right where that intersection is, where that angle is, that's where we're gonna to stitch to. And what happens then when we open this up is that along the bottom here, We've got one nice, long, straight edge. And I am going to trim off these dog ears as I go. So this excess here we don't need. And then this little bit here we don't need. Now we've got a nice, neat, big triangle. Those triangles are all done. And we need to take two of these, one of these non-patchwork triangles, one of these four patches that has two accents in the corners, and two of these four patches that just have jelly roll pieces back to the sewing machine. Let's get these pieces laid out here. The two accents are going to face like that with the big triangle there. We've got these, whoops, these patchwork triangles here and here, and then we're filling in with these two blocks here and here. So I'm simply going to make this row and then that row 
and then we'll put them together. So let's start with these two. And you may or may not have all of these intersections in the middle here. They may not be nested, but that's okay. You can still sew them together. It's just easier if they're nested. These two happen to be nested here, and that does make it easier to get the intersection perfect, but even if they're not, you can still make them match. The next row only has these two pieces, so we always line up the edges of the triangle and let the excess hang off the bottom. So it always feels like it's too big. It's not, but it always feels like there's quite a bit hanging off the edge there. And the last row just has that piece there. So let's press all of the top seams this way. And this seam will go in that direction. And now we can sew this seam here. I think it's going to be easiest if I put them right sides together and then flip this whole thing upside down to stitch it. Same thing with this seam. I think it's going to be easiest to stitch from the edges that line up here toward the triangles. And we'll press this seam down and this seam up. And I'm going to trim off any dog ears we've got. Again, be kind of careful when you're pressing this that you don't stretch it out too much there. So I'm going to trim off any of these extra dog ears in the back here so we don't have extra bulk. All of those patchwork triangle units are all done. And the next step is to take some of these single squares, the rest of the four patch blocks, and these rectangular background pieces to the sewing machine. We're going to take and use up all of the rest of these block units and the background. This is what it's going to look like. One of these guys with two background rectangles on each side of it and then one individual square there. So all I have to do is stitch that up and do the same thing with all the rest of them. We are almost done with all the patchwork. We're gonna take these and these back over to the machine. This block is also pretty simple. We need two of these with those single blocks in the middle and two of the big background squares and we're gonna sew them together. Those big blocks are done, and now all we have to do is take these last remaining patchwork blocks and these triangles back to the machine. Each of these blocks gets two triangles stitched onto it, and they get stitched on the sides where we've got that single block, so these two sides. So we're going to line up this first edge here. This is the same method we used earlier where we line up these square edges here and stitch to the end and there will be excess hanging off and that's okay, you stitch right off. The triangle pieces always feel like they're too big, but they're not and I'll show you why. We're gonna press this toward the accent and I'm gonna press it all the way down even with that little bit pressed right there. Now this piece, again, we're gonna line up these edges and I like to flip it upside down and I want to show you this far corner here. So what we want when we get to the bottom here is we want to stitch a quarter inch and we want that quarter inch to end up right where those two pieces overlap. So I'm going to get it down here, line everything up,
And then when we open this up, the seam goes towards the triangle. We should end up with a long straight line all the way along here. Mine's almost perfect there. I've just got these little dog ears hanging off. So I'm gonna open this back, fold that back over and cut off that one. And then this one, we can do it after we iron or you can snip it off right now. We are ready to lay out the quilt. What we have now is two different squares. These are exactly the same size. And we have two different kind of triangles and they're exactly the same size. The layout is pretty easy. We're gonna start with these big patchwork squares and we're gonna do three by three. And they get laid out on the diagonal with those accent colors on the sides. Now these big squares, they face like this with the double background going up and down. So we're gonna put these all in here and they're gonna go up on the top as well. These last two blocks go on the bottom and now we're going to start adding triangles. So the triangles with the accent color, we put three of those down here and then up the sides, we're going to put this kind of triangle. It is so cool how the pattern starts to show up when you add all of these. And that finishes off the great big rectangle of all that patchwork. All I have to do now is sew everything together and the rows are diagonal. So that's our first row. This is the next row. And I will get the rows made, sew the rows together. Then I just have to add one border and I can get it loaded onto the quilting machine. I've got the top of the hidden terrace quilt all done and I didn't quilt it yet. I ran out of time because I'm going on a family vacation in a couple hours, but I wanted to be able to share this with you before I left. I'm very happy with that dark border. It frames the patchwork so nicely and look how the accents travel across the quilt and the, the um, accent color here on the bottom, these little triangles, same thing at the top. They just finish it off very, very nicely. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're stitching your borders on, if you lay out your quilt top like mine here and it's not laying very flat, you have an opportunity to see how can I make this lay flatter. So if you stretch your border as you're sewing it on to the outside here, this will be crumpled up a little bit. If your border looks like it's rippling, then you've stretched this as you stitch the border on. So I always like to lay it out before I even put it on the machine so I can see how flat it is. For thread colors, we've got a lot of options here. There's a lot of neutrals that will work here. We could even go with this red that's the same color as the accent. So that's exactly this same color here. And that will give you very prominent quilting in these plain areas. And that actually would look really nice. Normally, I like my thread color to recede a little more. So this one, it's kind of a greeny color, very nice and dull, like these Civil War prints. It's not going to show very much in here. So this is what I think I will actually go with. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. And at the end of every video, we like to do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a little quilt called Mirror Mirror. We've made Mirror Mirror a bigger size in a video, and it has these colors that look like they're twisting around in ribbons and they mirror each other. It's very easy to enter the giveaways. All you have to do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway and put in your name and your email address and you might be the next lucky winner. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.